Hello there. Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon, and today is going to be spectacular. It's already spectacular, right? Listen, we are alive. We have breath in our body. Jesus is Lord. Uh, we know where our eternal destination is. We're going to heaven. Our names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And if that's not you, guess what? It's a simple prayer. It's just a simple prayer. It is as simple as a thief on the cross that looked at Jesus and said, remember me. And Jesus said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Listen, if you have never said that remember me prayer, if you've never said, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God. Uh, I uh, ask for your forgiveness. I am now born again. Holy Spirit, fill me and use me. It's just that simple. And I know many times the mind tries to talk us out of it. But look, when you pray that prayer, your spirit man will come alive. And then you get to read the word of God. You get to pray. You get to get involved in a local church. And you get to watch awesome programming like this. There is a beautiful community available for you. And today I'm going to introduce you to an incredible couple that is helping and empowering of our community. How they help and empower is through helping parents. Uh, and if you're not a parent, maybe you're going to be a parent, maybe you're a grandparent, maybe you're a spiritual parent, a godparent, but their book is amazing. It's called Salt, Light, and Kids. And it's about parenting in today's culture. And it's a challenge. It is a challenge. I have eight grandsons and I watch my children and I pray for them because they are facing challenges I didn't face as a parent. I, as a parent, faced challenges my parents didn't face. Have you ever heard that story that says that in the 1960s, the biggest problem in school was uh, children or kids talking and chewing gum? And now, you know, you fast forward and the problems in school are so different today. The problems in our home, the problems with culture, the problems with social media, they're so different. So listen, we need all the help we can get. And that's why I'm so, so grateful for Steve and Leanne Hines that have written this book. It's a resource and we're going to unpack it and talk about it. Um, one of the scriptures, of course, you know, comes from Matthew where, where Jesus tells us to be salt and light. Um, and, and so we're going to bounce off that. And then one of my other favorite scriptures is Proverbs 22, 6. You're familiar with it. To train a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart. The Passion Translation reads it like this. Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And the values that they've learned from you will be with them for life. You get to be a trainer, an intercessor, and a prayer warrior for your children and those that God has assigned you to. So let's go to this life hack, and then we're going to go straight to the living room with Stephen Lee. Hi, I'm Mike Shreve, the author of The Beliefs of the Catholic Church. And the subtitle is 25 Questions Comparing Doctrines, Practices, and Traditions to Scripture. And I'm going to focus on one particular thing I highlight in the book, and that's whether or not we should pray to the saints, which is a common practice in Catholicism. I was confirmed. I went through the sacrament of confirmation when I was about 11 years old, and I received a new name, the name Christopher. And I was supposed to pray to Christopher the rest of my life and that I would have a special and personal relationship with that former saint. And uh, I should appeal to Christopher when I was in need in certain areas. Is that even biblically correct? Is that even possible? I want you to think about how that not only theologically, but logically, it's a very, very questionable practice. First of all, it was 993 AD before anyone was ever canonized as a saint. There's a certain process now in place in the Catholic Church that a, a saint, a supposed saint, has to be subjected to after death in order to qualify for sainthood. And then Catholics can appeal to that saint to pray in their behalf. And that did not happen until 993 AD when the first saint was canonized. Think of that. So the first thousand years almost of the church, this thing about praying to the saints did not even exist. It didn't happen. 
And is it logically even possible? Let me give an example. What about praying to Mary? And for a Catholic, the word praying is different than worshiping. Catholics would only worship God, but they believe praying means communicating. And there's 1.3 billion Catholics in the world, and most of them revere Mary very highly, and many of them possibly even pray the rosary, maybe once a day or once a week. And the rosary highlights every, every decade, which is a series of 12 prayers, 10 of them are Hail Marys, where Mary is addressed. Well, just suppose that a billion people around the world called Catholics, were praying that prayer on a daily basis, then Mary would have to have the capacity of being aware of and responding to a billion different people within a 24-hour span of time. And that would overlap by hundreds of thousands. Can you imagine trying to hold a conversation with 100,000 people at once? How confusing that would be. I do very well just to process one conversation and keep my focus and my attention on one person talking to me. It would be an absolute impossibility, even in a heavenly state, for someone who had gone on to that celestial world to receive hundreds of thousands of communications from earth simultaneously. That person would have to be omniscient, which means knowing everything, and omnipresent. They'd have to be personally present with each one of those persons making a petition. And those are attributes that only God has. Only God is omniscient. Only God is omnipresent. And besides, the Bible very clearly in Deuteronomy, say for instance, chapter 13, Deuteronomy uh, states that it is an abomination to try and contact the dead. It's listed among practices that were pagan in origin. And God told the children of Israel, if they were to be perfect before the Lord their God, they would never participate in such things. If it was wrong to try and contact the dead then, it's wrong to try and contact the dead now. Besides, which would you rather have responding to you in prayer? The creator of the universe? or one of his created beings. I believe I'll go to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Father of all creation, because that's who can make a difference in my life. Mike Shreve, thank you for answering that question, because many people, they, they, don't, they wanna know, is it okay to pray to saints? Because that's what they grew up in. And so thank you for addressing that. I love that you uh, address difficult topics and we're going to address a difficult topic today. It's a blessing, but it's also difficult. It's called parenting. And uh, notice I've never written a book on parenting because the verdict's still out with all my children, but they are prayed over. But um, thank you guys for being here today. It's such an honor thank to you have so you. Much. Beautiful Leanne, Steve. Handsome Steve, no. okay. I don't want to call you beautiful. I call my sons beautiful and they're like, mom, I do too. we're not beautiful. I'm like, yes, you are. They are, they are aren't they? Yes. Okay, so you guys were high school sweethearts and you married, you've been married for over 30 years. You have children, you have grandchildren, you've had an incredible uh, career, entrepreneur, and uh, then musician. I mean, some people just get all the gifts, right? <laughs> uh, lacrosse, blah, blah. I'm like, wow, 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 wow. I'm impressed. But the cool thing is that one day the Lord said in 2022, write a book. And it was not on your radar, right? Not at all. Okay, so not at all. tell us about this encounter. Sure. Um, professionally, I've done a few different things. And I kind of have been at the point in my life where I knew it was time to do something different. Yeah. And I waited on the Lord, which is difficult to do <laughs> sometimes, particularly being a brain like mine, which doesn't wait very well. And in the fall of 22, so about a year ago, I could have been a year ago, you know, today, I was sitting alone with my one-year-old granddaughter who was taking a nap in yeah. the car. And I told my daughter, I know how important nap time is. So I'll sit in here while you go with the other daughter. So I'm sitting in total silence. And, you know, 
thinking back, I've been a believer my whole life and thinking back of the times I've really, really heard a strong word from the Lord or God's voice is on count of one hand probably, which yeah. may not be good, but usually it's gentle whispers and things like that. And the Lord sitting in that car, total silence, which is unusual to be doing for anybody these days. He said, write a book on parents. Wow. And I sat there and really thought, did I just hear that? And it was very clear that I did. There was never one bit of doubt. And so I thought I've never had one inkling of an idea to write a book, much less a book on parenting. We've been fortunate to work with parents a lot in small groups, small groups. and mentor and, them and, and things Bible like that. Study. Yeah. And, uh, and so I went home and told her, mm -hmm. she's like, well, that doesn't surprise me because <laughs> I've been with you for over 40 years. And I started writing and, and had the first draft of the entire book in less than a week. Yeah, I read that. That's amazing. Yeah. That is, that is you know, I think we're in a season of acceleration. Yep. And, and you are proof. I mean, that is, I, I mean, really. That's awesome. <laughs> I, 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 and I mentioned this, and she, uh, uh, Leanne and I kind of went back and forth on whether I should say this, but I, I did. I felt like I was a scribe just taking words yeah. down yeah. a lot of the time as I was writing, and, and that was really confirming to me because I knew God had a message he wanted to get out through me. This wasn't necessarily what's up here. It's what's up there flowing through here. Yeah. So so that was a that was a great time as I wrote just going all right God and you know typing and barely feeling like I could barely keep up with it so wow really neat experience well let me ask you um Leanne Steve did you ever think wow we're we're just exceptional parents we're anointed to be parents and why wouldn't God use us to write a book and, and have a movement go ahead I love being a mama. Yeah. That was one of the, the, the season of my life that I just felt like I was thriving and I enjoyed it. I yeah. mean, even the hard stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm no saint. There were times I was like, please let these teeth happen. This is, <laughs> this is bad. Yes. <laughs> but um, no, I worried a lot, which I confess. I mean, because yeah. I know we shouldn't. Um, and I doubted a lot. Doubted, was that the right choice? Did we make the right choice? Are we, do we look crazy? You know, um, I remember being accused by both children, you know, you, you, uh -uh, mommy, you're a pilgrim. This is, this is, uh, -uh you're ancient. And, <laughs> a Quaker. But, but then mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I had faith that whatever we just did was going to work out. Right. I have a, a dear friend who her, you know, strong in her faith and she would always go, in. it's going to work out. Yeah. And that was just the, the little prompting I needed from a, a girlfriend to just yeah. say, cut the worry. It'll be okay. And I give him all the props on the planet for always talking me off the doubt ledge. But yes, the always ledge. he always talks me off the, the doubt Aww. ledge. Even <laughs> even when I left my yeah. wallet in the Uber yes. that drove us over here <laughs> one hour ago, <laughs> yeah. it, was it was returned. Case in point, <laughs> yes. it was. Yes. It was. Thank you. <laughs> and she she said something. I'll kind of follow up on it. We we made mistakes. It was mm -hmm. it was. And it's interesting looking back and even talking to our kids yeah. now. My, we have a really close relationship with both the kids, and we talk about the stories when they're growing up. But one thing, the, the name of the book, initially I was calling it was Leaving It All on the Field, mm -hmm. which is a sports metaphor. And my editor asked me what that meant, and I said, okay, that's not going to be the name of the book. Yeah. If, but it uh, is the last <laughs> chapter in the book. It is the last yeah. chapter, <laughs> and, and I think we kind of came in our, our parenting journey to – if, if we gave it everything we had and trusted in the Lord, even if we made mistakes, yeah. and we almost always knew immediately if we made a mistake, but mm -hmm. my encouragement to her particularly was if, if you give it everything you got, that's all you can do, and then count on the Lord for the rest. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that sports metaphor is so accurate because there's, there's never been any sports team that's perfect. You know, there's never been any game that's perfect. You, you, you know, there's always, there's always uh, fouls and and, and problems, you know, if someone mm -hmm. has to win, someone has to lose. And in parenting, the Lord gives us these little humans and it's a little intimidating, yeah. right? It's a lot intimidating. Yes. Yeah. yes. 
And, you know, I will tell you one, I love the subtitle of your book because you put parenting well in today's culture, not parenting perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to hear Jesus say, well done, well done. my good and faithful servant. And, and, and I want you to parent well. And you really can't do that without the help of the Trinity. 100%. I, yeah. So tell, tell, okay, I love many of the chapters, um, and I, I want you to, well, first of all, you guys tell me, what's your favorite chapter, what's your favorite chapter, and then we'll see if it's one of mine. You want to go first? No, you go first. I, in, until this week, I wouldn't have said this was my answer, but the last chapter, leaving it all in the field, at the end, the Lord moved me to give an invitation to come to Jesus. Yes. And, and at the very end of that, and that was just one of the writing things where God said, you need to give people a chance to accept me in yes. this book. And this week, I had somebody that read it who was not a believer at all, but her she really responded to the book. She said, even though it talked about, even though I don't believe in the Bible and all what it's about, there the concepts were great. And I thought, this is going to be an opportunity for me to maybe God to use me yes. to lead her to the Lord. Yes. So all of a sudden that became my favorite part of, of the book. Right. Uh, because I, I want I want to fulfill God's mission and I don't know what it is because it's been such a bizarre <laughs> happening, but he's got a plan. And so it's just cool kind of seeing it unfold. But I, I hope more than anything, it, it's able to bring people yeah. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite part? Well, it's funny. I probably, I don't know that I have a very favorite, so much of it when I read it. And we did a small group with um, some fellow believers in our neighborhood, actually. Um, and so I was reminded of the stories. And so it was kind of like my little flashback to yeah. moments that, I mean, I, I remember them, but I was reminded. But probably it's the one you referred to while ago, leaving it all in the field, because that is what he would say to me yeah. over and over and over when I was worried about whether, you know, something as drastic as. <laughs> making the decision to nix a friendship. Right. Well, that gets very scary. It does. Um, you, you look like you're judging. You yeah. look, and, and that the parents don't understand. And, you know, the, the whole body of people are now saying, well, who do you think you are? Yeah. And, you know, but it, it wasn't about who do I think I am. It is about, you know, where's this spinning out of control? And so one thing we can do is say we're going to limit, yeah. you know, this. But um, he, that, that was the line he used over and over is, Leanne, we're doing everything we can. It's all you can do. That's right. We'll leave it on the field. Yeah. That's what he said. We'll leave it on the field. Yeah. So that would be mine. That came from your lacrosse days. Yeah. Right? It did. <laughs> and I've always well, and he's been, a softball freak. I'm a sports person. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But you think, and I use Tom Brady, which I'm not a big Tom Brady fan, but you can bet. He, one thing he could say every time was, I did everything I could today yeah. to do a great job. Right. And so that's so important for parents. It is. Well, I'll tell you something I really appreciate about the book because, you know, my husband and I, we went to so many different parenting classes. And at the time, a lot of things that were available to us were very legalistic and very, there was so much pressure and uh, it all fell on us you know, to do these little rituals and routines with our children. And, you know, we homeschooled for a while. So we'd mm -hmm. go to the homeschool conferences and we'd get all these things. And then when your children didn't perform the way their children performed, and when you made a mistake, and if you forgot couch time, are you, oh, you know, it's just <laughs> yeah. like, it's, I've ruined them. I've messed up the plan. Yeah. And I appreciate your books be, be, book because it's not legalistic. Mm -hmm. It's not, there's not this pressure. It is inviting the Holy Spirit, and, and you're teaching practical things, but also just deep spiritual truths. One of my favorite chapters is when you're talking about developing a servant's heart mm -hmm. in your children. Yeah. That's so a big one. It is big. Today. It's a, that's a big one. Yeah. You did such a wonderful job addressing that. Well, thank you. People ask me what parenting style the book is written about, and the first time I was asked that, I was like, mine and Leanne's because it's basically the story of us parenting our two kids. It was interesting. My son, who's 29 now, this week did a promo video for the book. Yeah. And it was hearing it from him was really cool. And he said, one of the greatest things is looking back as an adult now mm -hmm. and seeing back then you were just my parent. 
but now I see how y'all were parenting and it was a big difference for him. And the thing, and he was mad at me, particularly plenty, <laughs> plenty, but now he appreciates that's that. Right. And what you said uh, earlier about training up a child the way they should go and when they're old, that's, that was another thing we leaned on, mm -hmm. particularly with the him promises. because he was <laughs> not <scripture>. always <clears throat> straight line to the Lord. Yeah. He was working on his testimony. Yes. Yeah, That's yes. what and I he's say. he's got a yes. great testimony now. He has a great <laughs> For one. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes we, ha we have to let our children go through the process. The same process yes. we all had to go through to really get sold out to Jesus. But then somehow as a Christian parent, we feel like <gasps> they can't make a mistake. But yeah. they have to. They have to, have they to. They have to have their own God walk and their own God journey. And our greatest gift is just interceding for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I have a quote this is very rough uh version of it but i talk about bowling lanes that have yes. bumpers yes and parents want their kids to have a great bowling score so they're their bumper their bumpers in their lanes for their whole life but then when they leave the house they're terrible bowlers yes because they've mm -hmm. never bowled without bumpers <laughs> so if you don't have bumpers all the time parents yeah being the bumpers for your mm -hmm. kids your kids may not get as good a score all the time but when they leave home, they're going to be a lot better bowler than they would have been otherwise. Yeah, I think that you called it the gutter ball, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have that in my notes somewhere yes. that, that you got to let it go in the gutter sometimes so to. that they know how to recover and they know how to handle disappointment and right. loss and, you know, when things don't go their way. Yes. Well, and it's funny because, you know, we grew up with wonderful parents, but, you know, it never occurred to them on any level to run to the school because they didn't like the teacher we were going to be given. And, you know, so we did benefit from having parents that raised us that way. But I will say that when we were parenting in elementary school, middle school, um, less so in high school, that was a thing. Yeah. It, it means very much, you know, didn't like the coach, didn't want the teacher. To, and, and I do remember thinking that can't be good. That right, and not be good for these kids to never suffer. I mean, right. even though that's not suffering, but to them at that moment, it was suffering. Right. And so um, I, I just, the helicopter parent thing and all yep. of that is something to discuss. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, you, y'all write a, a chapter about not over rescuing your children. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm, I am slightly guilty, but I see other people that are crazy guilty of, you you said it. You, we can't we can't keep them out of environments where they're not going to get triggered. Where they're mm -hmm. going to get triggered. Mm -hmm. And but then you teach. And by the way, I love at the end of the book you have these five practical questions, and you mm -hmm. know where they can really break down and have communication and discussion, whether it's just husband and wife or a single parent or in a group like you do. You right. often do groups. But um, our children are going to get triggered. It's just part of life. They have to learn how to overcome. That's exactly right. And more than ever, I think parents are trying to protect their children. And it's just, and of course, we're older, so it's easy to see in hindsight. Uh, but that's just so damaging it is. to kids to it is. not let them. I mean, we let, I can remember my son, you know, getting, having a bunch of times having to sit in the front of the class because he talked too much. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, we made a we made a point when they first started grade school that we would never go up to school and say one word to a teacher or whatever, uh, you know, somebody in authority unless they were in danger or were being bullied yeah. or something like that. But if they made a bad grade, too bad, dude. You got to study harder. Yeah, figure it's it out. It's not because the teacher gave you an unfair yeah. test yeah. Or, or whatever. If you had to stay and run laps after school or be in detention. Oh, well. Yeah. And that's, parents are missing that today. Well, it teaches them there's a consequence for action. It's yes. the if then that's all throughout the Bible. Yes. You, you know, the, God loves us all unconditionally, uh, but there are conditions for blessing. Yes. And, 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 and you guys really did a great job of that. Thank you. So um, much. I just, Steve Leanne, I just want to take the time now to get you to pray because there's, there's someone watching, there's a single mom watching or, I feel like there's a parent watching that's just saying, well, it's too late for me. I, I, my children are older. How can I get this book? How can it change me? How can I reverse the damage I did? You know, or a dad that he's like, I wasn't parented correctly. How do I parent? So however the Lord leads you or the Holy Spirit leads you, I, 
you know, to minister and to pray, I just feel like it's real important. Yes. Well, I'd love to pray for us. Yes, absolutely. Like Thank you. Lord, I pray, pray a blessing over all the audience, everybody in this room, all the parents out there and all the people who may not be parents. I, I pray for just the guidance in everything we do. I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us at a, at, at a way of never before having been filled so we can clearly hear your voice, Lord. I thank you for the parents out there. I feel sorry for them in some ways at the challenges they face that I didn't face as a parent or my parents didn't face. But I pray that you give them eyes to see and ears to hear how Satan is attacking their kids. Give them the wisdom to be able to protect their children. Lord, I pray for just protection over everyone in the world. Uh, I pray for the, the Middle East right now. Yes, I pray Lord. for the inner cities right oh, now. Gosh. I pray for the neighborhoods we might live in right now where there's so much pain. There's so much mm. Anger, there's so much uh, confusion, Lord, and I pray. I know Satan is a is the liar and the father of lies, and but God, you are the author of peace, and we pray for peace yes. and clarity in everything that's going on in the world, in our country, in our mm -hmm. neighborhoods, and in our homes. I pray a blessing over Jen oh, and her you, ministry, Father. Lord, and just it's been such a blessing for us to be here today. And just, I pray, a covering over her and her to continue to be bold and to be an influence for you and for your son. And we're just so thankful for that. And uh, Lord, just uh, we pray that your son comes back quickly. We're ready yeah. for the day. We're ready for the yes, hour. Ready. We're ready for the minute. We're ready for the second. So come, Lord Jesus, and just thank you for all you do for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Thank you, Lee. So and you guys are just precious <laughs> and you. so enjoyed it. I wish we could do 10 more shows, but I'm sure <laughs> God, this I do know. We'll see each other again because yes. you are obedient in this project. I'm sure he's going to give you more. Yes. <laughs> um, but I encourage you to go get this book. It's saltlightandkids.com. Right. Saltlightandkids.com. Make sure you grab that. Reach out to them. It's on Amazon. Yeah. And all the different places. Wonderful. Well, am, go to Amazon because that just helps drive up the numbers. Um, I I will tell you, thank you guys for the way you honor your senior pastor. Mm -hmm. um, just in the forward and in your discussions, that is a rare gift and he's blessed to have you. Um, you're so honoring of him. And so thank you for watching today. Listen, if you don't have a good parent, God is the perfect parent and he's there to help you parent. I'm Jen Mallon. Thank you for watching. Come home.